The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, is an international environmental treaty adopted on 9 May 1992 and opened for signature at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro from 3 to 14 June 1992. It then entered into force on 21 March 1994, after a sufficient number of countries had ratified it. The UNFCCC objective is to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system. The framework sets non-binding limits on greenhouse gas emissions for individual countries and contains no enforcement mechanisms. Instead, the framework outlines how specific international treaties called protocols or agreements may be negotiated to specify further action towards the objective of the UNFCCC. Initially, an Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee INC, produced the text of the Framework Convention during its meeting in New York from 30 April to 9 May 1992. The UNFCCC was adopted on 9 May 1992, and opened for signature on 4 June 1992. The UNFCCC has 197 parties as of December 2015. The convention enjoys broad legitimacy, largely due to its nearly universal membership. The parties to the convention have met annually from 1995 in conferences of the parties COP to assess progress in dealing with climate change. In 1997, the Kyoto Protocol was concluded and established legally binding obligations for developed countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions in the period 2008 to 2012. The 2010 United Nations Climate Change Conference produced an agreement stating that future global warming should be limited to below 2.0 degrees Celsius (3.6 degrees Fahrenheit) relative to the pre-industrial level. The protocol was amended in 2012 to encompass the period 2013 to 2020 in the Doha Amendment, which as of December 2015 had not entered into force. In 2015 the Paris Agreement was adopted, governing emission reductions from 2020 on through commitments of countries in nationally determined contributions, lowering the target to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Paris Agreement entered into force on 4 November 2016. One of the first tasks set by the UNFCCC was for signatory nations to establish National Greenhouse Gas Inventories of Greenhouse Gas GHG emissions and removals, which were used to create the 1990 benchmark levels for accession of Annex I countries to the Kyoto Protocol and for the commitment of those countries to GHG reductions. Updated inventories must be submitted annually by Annex I countries. UNFCCC is also the name of the United Nations Secretariat charged with supporting the operation of the Convention, with offices in House Karstangen, and the UN campus known as Langer Eugen in Bonn, Germany. From 2010 to 2016 the head of the Secretariat was Christiana Figueres. In July 2016, Patricia Espinoza succeeded Figueres. The Secretariat, augmented through the parallel efforts of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, aims to gain consensus through meetings and the discussion of various strategies. Topic. Treaty The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change UNFCCC, was opened for signature at the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development UNCED, in Rio de Janeiro, known by its popular title, the Earth Summit. 
On 12 June 1992, 154 nations signed the UNFCCC, which upon ratification committed signatories' governments to reduce atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases with the goal of preventing dangerous anthropogenic interference with Earth's climate system. This commitment would require substantial reductions in greenhouse gas emissions see the later section, stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations. Article 3 of the Convention states that parties should act to protect the climate system on the basis of common but differentiated responsibilities and that developed country parties should take the lead in addressing climate change. Under Article 4, all parties make general commitments to address climate change through, for example, climate change mitigation and adapting to the eventual impacts of climate change. Article 4 7 states, the extent to which developing country parties will effectively implement their commitments under the Convention will depend on the effective implementation by developed country parties of their commitments under the Convention related to financial resources and transfer of technology and will take fully into account that economic and social development and poverty eradication are the first and overriding priorities of the developing country parties. The Framework Convention specifies the aim of developed Annex I parties stabilizing their greenhouse gas emissions carbon dioxide and other anthropogenic greenhouse gases not regulated under the Montreal Protocol at 1990 levels, by the year 2000. <laughs> Kyoto Protocol After the signing of the UNFCCC Treaty, parties to the UNFCCC have met at conferences, conferences of the parties, COPS, to discuss how to achieve the treaty's aims. At the first conference of the parties, COP1, parties decided that the aim of Annex I parties stabilizing their emissions at 1990 levels by the year 2000 was not adequate. And further discussions at later conferences led to the Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol sets emissions targets for developed countries which are binding under international law. The Kyoto Protocol has had two commitment periods, the first of which lasted from 2008 to 2012. The second one runs from 2013 to 2020 and is based on the Doha Amendment to the Protocol, which has not entered into force. The U.S. has not ratified the Kyoto Protocol, while Canada denounced it in 2012. The Kyoto Protocol has been ratified by all the other Annex I parties. All Annex I parties, excluding the U.S., have participated in the first Kyoto commitment period. 37 Annex I countries and the EU have agreed to second-round Kyoto targets. These countries are Australia, all members of the European Union, Belarus, Croatia, Iceland, Kazakhstan, Norway, Switzerland, and Ukraine. Belarus, Kazakhstan and Ukraine have stated that they may withdraw from the protocol or not put into legal force the amendment with second round targets. Japan, New Zealand, and Russia have participated in Kyoto's first round but have not taken on new targets in the second commitment period. Other developed countries without second round targets are Canada which withdrew from the Kyoto Protocol in 2012 and the United States. Topic: <laughs> Paris Agreement. In 2011, parties adopted the Durban Platform for Enhanced Action. As part of the Durban platform, parties have agreed to develop a protocol, another legal instrument or an agreed outcome with legal force under the convention applicable to all parties. At Durban and Doha, parties noted, with grave concern, 
that current efforts to hold global warming to below 2 or 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to the pre-industrial level appear inadequate. In 2015, all then 196 parties to the convention came together for the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris the 30th of November to the 12th of December and adopted by consensus the Paris Agreement aimed at limiting global warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius and pursue efforts to limit the rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Paris Agreement entered into force on November 4, 2016. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Intended nationally determined contributions. At the 19th session of the Conference of the Parties in Warsaw in 2013, the UNFCCC created a mechanism for intended nationally determined contributions INDCs to be submitted in the run-up to the 21st session of the Conference of the Parties in Paris COP21 in 2015. Countries were given freedom and flexibility to ensure these climate change mitigation and adaptation plans were nationally appropriate. This flexibility, especially regarding the types of actions to be undertook, allowed for developing countries to tailor their plans to their specific adaptation and mitigation needs, as well as towards other needs. In the aftermath of COP21, these INDCs became nationally determined contributions NDCs when a country ratified the Paris Agreement, unless a new NDC was submitted to the UNFCCC at the same time. The 22nd session of the Conference of the Parties COP22 in Marrakesh focused on these nationally determined contributions and their implementation. After the Paris Agreement entered into force on 4 November 2016, the Climate and Development Knowledge Network CDKN created a guide for NDC implementation, for the use of decision makers in less developed countries. In this guide, CDKN identified a series of common challenges countries face in NDC implementation, including how to build awareness of the need for, and benefits of, action among stakeholders, including key government ministries, mainstream and integrate climate change into national planning and development processes, Strengthen the links between subnational and national government plans on climate change. Build capacity to analyze, develop and implement climate policy. Establish a mandate for coordinating actions around NDCs and driving their implementation. Address resource constraints for developing and implementing climate change policy. Topic. Other decisions In addition to the Kyoto Protocol and its amendment and the Paris Agreement, parties to the Convention have agreed to further commitments during UNFCCC conferences of the parties. These include the Bali Action Plan 2007, the Copenhagen Accord 2009, the Cancun Agreements 2010, and the Durban Platform for Enhanced Action 2012. Bali Action Plan is part of the Bali Action Plan, adopted in 2007, all developed country parties have agreed to quantified emission limitation and reduction objectives, while ensuring the comparability of efforts among them, taking into account differences in their national circumstances. Developing country parties agreed to nationally appropriate mitigation actions NAMAS, context of sustainable development, supported and enabled by technology, financing and capacity building, in a measurable, reportable and verifiable manner. Forty-two developed countries have submitted mitigation targets to the UNFCCC Secretariat, as have 57 developing countries and the African Group a group of countries within the UN. 
Copenhagen Accord and Cancun Agreements As part of the 2009 Copenhagen negotiations, a number of countries produced the Copenhagen Accord. The accord states that global warming should be limited to below 2.0 degrees Celsius 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This may be strengthened in 2015 with a target to limit warming to below 1.5 degrees Celsius. The accord does not specify what the baseline is for these temperature targets e.g., relative to pre-industrial or 1990 temperatures. According to the UNFCCC, these targets are relative to pre-industrial temperatures. 114 countries agreed to the accord. The UNFCCC Secretariat notes that some parties stated in their communications to the Secretariat specific understandings on the nature of the accord and related matters, based on which they have agreed to the accord. The accord was not formally adopted by the Conference of the Parties. Instead, the COP took note of the Copenhagen Accord. As part of the accord, 17 developed country parties and the EU 27 have submitted mitigation targets, as have 45 developing country parties. Some developing country parties have noted the need for international support in their plans. As part of the Cancun agreements, developed and developing countries have submitted mitigation plans to the UNFCCC. These plans are compiled with those made as part of the Bali Action Plan. Developing countries at Berlin, Cancun, and Durban, the development needs of developing country parties were reiterated. For example, the Durban platform reaffirms that Social and economic development and poverty eradication are the first and overriding priorities of developing country parties, and that a low emission development strategy is central to sustainable development, and that the share of global emissions originating in developing countries will grow to meet their social and development needs. Topic. Interpreting Article 2 The ultimate objective of the Framework Convention is to stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic i.e., human-caused interference with the climate system. As is stated in the Article 2 of the Convention, this should be achieved within a time frame sufficient to allow ecosystems to adapt naturally to climate change, to ensure that food production is not threatened and to enable economic development to proceed in a sustainable manner. To stabilize atmospheric GHG concentrations, global anthropogenic GHG emissions would need to peak then decline see climate change mitigation. Lower stabilization levels would require emissions to peak and decline earlier compared to higher stabilization levels. The graph above shows projected changes in annual global GHG emissions measured in CO2 equivalents for various stabilization scenarios. The other two graphs show the associated changes in atmospheric GHG concentrations in CO2 equivalents and global mean temperature for these scenarios. Lower stabilization levels are associated with lower magnitudes of global warming compared to higher stabilization levels. There is uncertainty over how GHG concentrations and global temperatures will change in response to anthropogenic emissions see climate change feedback and climate sensitivity. The graph opposite shows global temperature changes in the year 2100 for a range of emission scenarios, including uncertainty estimates. Dangerous anthropogenic interference there are a range of views over what level of climate change is dangerous. 
Scientific analysis can provide information on the risks of climate change, but deciding which risks are dangerous requires value judgments. The global warming that has already occurred poses a risk to some human and natural systems, e.g., coral reefs. Higher magnitudes of global warming will generally increase the risk of negative impacts. According to Field et al., 2014, climate change risks are considerable, with 1 to 2 degrees Celsius of global warming, relative to pre-industrial levels. 4 degrees Celsius warming would lead to significantly increased risks, with potential impacts including widespread loss of biodiversity and reduced global and regional food security. Climate change policies may lead to costs that are relevant to the Article 2. For example, more stringent policies to control GHG emissions may reduce the risk of more severe climate change, but may also be more expensive to implement. Projections there is considerable uncertainty over future changes in anthropogenic GHG emissions, atmospheric GHG concentrations, and associated climate change. Without mitigation policies, increased energy demand and extensive use of fossil fuels could lead to global warming in 2100 of 3.7 to 4.8 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels, 2.5 to 7.8 degrees Celsius including climate uncertainty, to have a likely chance of limiting global warming in 2100 to below 2 degrees Celsius, GHG concentrations would need to be limited to around 450 ppm CO2 eq. The current trajectory of global emissions does not appear to be consistent with limiting global warming to below 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius. Topic. Precautionary principle In decision-making, the precautionary principle is considered when possibly dangerous, irreversible, or catastrophic events are identified, but scientific evaluation of the potential damage is not sufficiently certain Toth et al., 2001, pp. 655-656. The precautionary principle implies an emphasis on the need to prevent such adverse effects. Uncertainty is associated with each link of the causal chain of climate change. For example, future GHG emissions are uncertain, as are climate change damages. However, following the precautionary principle, uncertainty is not a reason for inaction, and this is acknowledged in Article 3.3 of the UNFCCC, Toth et al., 2001, p. 656. Topic. Parties As of 2015, the UNFCCC has 197 parties including all United Nations member states, United Nations General Assembly Observer State of Palestine, UN non-member states Niue and the Cook Islands and the Supranational Union European Union. The Holy See is not a member state, but is an observer. Topic. Classification of parties and their commitments Parties to the UNFCCC are classified as Annex I. There are 43 parties to the UNFCCC listed in Annex I of the Convention, including the European Union. These parties are classified as industrialized developed countries and Economies in Transition EITs. The 14 EITs are the former centrally planned Soviet economies of Russia and Eastern Europe. Annex II, of the parties listed in Annex I of the Convention, 24 are also listed in Annex II of the Convention, including the European Union. 
These parties are made up of members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD. Annex II parties are required to provide financial and technical support to the EITs and developing countries to assist them in reducing their greenhouse gas emissions climate change mitigation and manage the impacts of climate change climate change adaptation. Annex B. Parties listed in Annex B of the Kyoto Protocol are Annex I parties with first or second round Kyoto greenhouse gas emissions targets see Kyoto Protocol for details. The first round targets apply over the years 2008-2012. As part of the 2012 Doha Climate Change Talks, an amendment to Annex B was agreed upon containing with a list of Annex I parties who have second-round Kyoto targets, which apply from 2013 to 2020. The amendments have not entered into force. Least Developed Countries LDCs, 47 parties are LDCs, and are given special status under the treaty in view of their limited capacity to adapt to the effects of climate change. Non-Annex I, parties to the UNFCCC not listed in Annex I of the Convention are mostly low-income developing countries. Developing countries may volunteer to become Annex I countries when they are sufficiently developed. Topic. List of parties Topic. Annex I countries There are 43 Annex I parties including the European Union. These countries are classified as industrialized countries and economies in transition. Of these, 24 are Annex II parties, including the European Union, and 14 are economies in transition. Notes Topic. Conferences of the parties The United Nations Climate Change Conference are yearly conferences held in the framework of the UNFCCC. They serve as the formal meeting of the UNFCCC parties, conferences of the parties, COP, to assess progress in dealing with climate change, and beginning in the mid-1990s, to negotiate the Kyoto Protocol to establish legally binding obligations for developed countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. From 2005 the conferences have also served as the meetings of parties of the Kyoto Protocol CMP. Also parties to the convention that are not parties to the protocol can participate in protocol-related meetings as observers. The first conference COP1 was held in 1995 in Berlin. The third conference COP3 was held in Kyoto and resulted in the Kyoto Protocol, which was amended during the 2012 Doha Conference COP18, CMP8. The COP21 CMP11 conference was held in Paris and resulted in adoption of the Paris Agreement. Negotiations for the Paris Agreement took place during COP22 in Marrakesh, Morocco. The 23rd COP, COP23, was led by Fiji and took place in Bonn, Germany. COP24 was held in Katowice, Poland. Topic: <laughs> Subsidiary bodies. A subsidiary body is a committee that assists the conference of the parties. Subsidiary bodies include Permanence The subsidiary body of scientific and technological advice SBSTA, is established by Article 9 of the Convention to provide the conference of the parties and, as appropriate, its other subsidiary bodies with timely information and advice on scientific and technological matters relating to the Convention. 
It serves as a link between information and assessments provided by expert sources such as the IPCC and the COP, which focuses on setting policy. The Subsidiary Body of Implementation SBI, is established by Article 10 of the Convention to assist the Conference of the Parties in the assessment and review of the effective implementation of the Convention. It makes recommendations on policy and implementation issues to the COP and, if requested, to other bodies. Temporary Ad Hoc Group on Article 13 AG 13, active from 1995 to 1998 Ad Hoc Group on the Berlin Mandate AGBM, active from 1995 to 1997 Ad Hoc Working Group on Further Commitments for Annex I Parties under the Kyoto Protocol AWGKP, established in 2005 by the parties to the Kyoto Protocol to consider further commitments of industrialized countries under the Kyoto Protocol for the period beyond 2012. It concluded its work in 2012 when the CMP adopted the Doha Amendment. Ad Hoc Working Group on Long-Term Cooperative Action AWGLCA, established in Bali in 2007 to conduct negotiations on a strengthened international deal on climate change. Ad Hoc Working Group on the Durban Platform for Enhanced Action ADP, established at COP17 in Durban in 2011 to develop a protocol, another legal instrument or an agreed outcome with legal force under the convention applicable to all parties. The ADP concluded its work in Paris on 5 December 2015. Secretariat The work under the UNFCCC is facilitated by a secretariat in Bonn, Germany. The secretariat is established under Article 8 of the Convention. It is headed by the Executive Secretary. The current Executive Secretary, Patricia Espinoza, was appointed on 18 May 2016 by United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki moon and took office on 18 July 2016. She succeeded Christiana Figueres who held the office since 2010. Former executive secretaries have been YVO de Boer 2006 to 2010, Joke Waller Hunter 2002 to 2005 and Michael Zamet Cuttager 1995 to 2002. Topic: Action for Climate Empowerment ACE Action for Climate Empowerment ACE, is a term adopted by the UNFCCC in 2015 to have a better name for this topic than Article 6. It refers to Article 6 of the Convention's original text 1992, focusing on six priority areas, education, training, public awareness, public participation, public access to information, and international cooperation on these issues. The implementation of all six areas has been identified as the pivotal factor for everyone to understand and participate in solving the complex challenges presented by climate change. ACE calls on governments to develop and implement educational and public awareness programs, train scientific, technical and managerial personnel, foster access to information, and promote public participation in addressing climate change and its effects. It also urges countries to cooperate in this process, by exchanging good practices and lessons learned, and strengthening national institutions. This wide scope of activities is guided by specific objectives that, together, are seen as crucial for effectively implementing climate adaptation and mitigation actions, and for achieving the ultimate objective of the UNFCCC. Topic. Commentaries and analysis
Topic: Criticisms of the UNFCCC process. The overall umbrella and processes of the UNFCCC and the adopted Kyoto Protocol have been criticized by some as not having achieved its stated goals of reducing the emission of carbon dioxide the primary culprit blamed for rising global temperatures of the 21st century. At a speech given at his alma mater, Todd Stern, the U.S. Climate Change Envoy, has expressed the challenges with the UNFCCC process as follows. Climate change is not a conventional environmental issue. It implicates virtually every aspect of a state's economy, so it makes countries nervous about growth and development. This is an economic issue every bit as it is an environmental one. He went on to explain that the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change is a multilateral body concerned with climate change and can be an inefficient system for enacting international policy. Because the framework system includes over 190 countries and because negotiations are governed by consensus, small groups of countries can often block progress. The failure to achieve meaningful progress and reach effective CO2 reducing policy treaties among the parties over the past 18 years have driven some countries like the United States to never ratify the UNFCCC's largest body of work. The Kyoto Protocol, in large part because the treaty didn't cover developing countries who now include the largest CO2 emitters. However, this fails to consider the historical responsibility for climate change since industrialization, which is a contentious issue in the talks, and responsibility for emissions from consumption and importation of goods. It has also led Canada to withdraw from the Kyoto Protocol out of a desire to not force its citizens to pay penalties that would result in wealth transfers out of Canada. Canada formally withdrew from the Kyoto Protocol in 2011. Both the U.S. and Canada are looking at voluntary emissions reduction schemes that they can implement internally to curb carbon dioxide emissions outside the Kyoto Protocol. The perceived lack of progress has also led some countries to seek and focus on alternative high value activities like the creation of the Climate and Clean Air Coalition to reduce short lived climate pollutants, which seeks to regulate short lived pollutants such as methane, black carbon and hydrofluorocarbons HFCs, which together are believed to account for up to one-third of current global warming but whose regulation is not as fraught with wide economic impacts and opposition. In 2010, Japan stated that it will not sign up to a second Kyoto term, because it would impose restrictions on it not faced by its main economic competitors, China, India and Indonesia. A similar indication was given by the Prime Minister of New Zealand in November 2012. At the 2012 conference, last-minute objections at the conference by Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and Kazakhstan were ignored by the governing officials, and they have indicated that they will likely withdraw or not ratify the treaty. These defections place additional pressures on the UNFCCC process that is seen by some as cumbersome and expensive. In the UK alone, the Climate Change Department has taken over 3,000 flights in two years at a cost of over 1,300,000 liras (British pounds). Before the 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference, National Geographic magazine added to the criticism, writing, "Since 1990." When the world's nations agreed at Rio de Janeiro to avoid dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system, they've met 20 times without moving the needle on carbon emissions. In that interval we've added almost as much carbon to the atmosphere as we did in the previous century. Topic. Benchmarking. Benchmarking is the setting of a policy target based on some frame of reference. 
An example of benchmarking is the UNFCCC's original target of Annex I parties limiting their greenhouse gas emissions at 1990 levels by the year 2000. Goldenberg et al. 1996 commented on the economic implications of this target. Although the target applies equally to all Annex I parties, the economic costs of meeting the target would likely vary between parties. For example, countries with initially high levels of energy efficiency might find it more costly to meet the target than countries with lower levels of energy efficiency. From this perspective, the UNFCCC target could be viewed as inequitable, i.e., unfair. Benchmarking has also been discussed in relation to the first round emissions targets specified in the Kyoto Protocol see views on the Kyoto Protocol and Kyoto Protocol and government action. International trade. Academics and environmentalists criticize the Article 3 5 of the Convention, which states that any climate measures that would restrict international trade should be avoided. <laughs> Engagement of civil society Civil society observers under the UNFCCC have organized themselves in loose groups, covering about 90% of all admitted organizations. Some groups remain outside these broad groupings, such as faith groups or national parliamentarians. An overview is given in the table below. Topic. See also. Climate ethics Individual and political action on climate change Kyoto Protocol List of international environmental agreements Montreal Protocol Post-Kyoto Protocol negotiations on greenhouse gas emissions United Nations Climate Change Conference United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification Keeling Curve Topic. Sources This article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SA IGO 3.0 License Statement, Action for Climate Empowerment, Guidelines for Accelerating Solutions Through Education, Training and Public, 6, 14-18, 26, 28, UNESCO and UNFCCC, UNESCO. UNESCO. To learn how to add open license text to Wikipedia articles, please see this how-to page. For information on reusing text from Wikipedia, please see the terms of use. <laughs> Notes <laughs>